In this video, we'll review how to find a basis for the eigenspace of a square matrix given its eigenvalues. In this example, I have the 3 by 3 matrix A presented above. In a previous video, we've determined that the eigenvalues of this uh, matrix are lambda equal to minus 4, 2, and 1. And for each one of those eigenvalues, uh, I want to find a basis for its corresponding eigenspace. Recall that lambda, or I'm sorry, x not equal to 0, a vector, is an eigenvector for lambda if and only if it's a solution to this equation a minus lambda i times x is equal to 0. And that occurs if and only if x is in the null space of the matrix a minus lambda i. So when I talk about the eigenspace, of a matrix corresponding to lambda, I'm talking about the null space a minus lambda i, where lambda will be one of these three values, an eigenvalue of our matrix. So let's take lambda equal to 1 and let's find the corresponding eigenspace. In this case, when I take lambda to be 1, I'm really just asking for a basis for the null space of a minus i. So let's compute a minus i. I'll take the matrix A, I'll subtract the identity matrix from it. That will subtract 1 along the diagonal entries and we'll get this matrix that appears here. Remember, I'm interested in the solutions to the equation equal to 0. A minus I times X equal to 0. So I should do a row reduction. And I had the computer row reduce for me, although it's not too hard in this example. And I get a row equivalent matrix. I use a little squiggly line there to mean row equivalent. They're certainly not equal matrices. And when I do that, I get the following matrix. You can see that there is no pivot in the first column. There is a pivot in the second and a pivot in the third. So this allows us now to write down the solutions to the equation a minus i times x equal to zero. Because there is no pivot in the first column, we see that the first variable x1 must be free. The second variable is equal to 0, and the third variable, x3, is also equal to 0. What this tells me is that x is equal to x1 times 1, 0, 0. We're writing this in vector form. And our conclusion, then, is that the null space of a minus i is the span of this single vector, 1, 0, 0. And this vector here, 1, 0, 0, is an eigenvector for the eigenvalue of lambda equal to 1. Specifically, though, a basis is just the set containing that single vector. So the set containing the vector 1, 0, 0 is a basis for the null space of A minus I. Here's our matrix A again. Let's take lambda to be equal to 2. That was another one of the eigenvalues. If I want to find the corresponding eigenspace, I look at the null space of a minus 2 times i. Let's calculate a minus 2 times i. So I take my matrix A, and I subtract from the matrix that has 2's along the diagonal. That's twice the identity. Subtracting 2 away from every entry along the diagonal of my matrix A results in this matrix. I will row reduce this matrix. I use the computer to do this, and I find that there is a pivot in the first two columns, but not a pivot in the third column. From here, we can re read off the solutions to the equation a minus 2 times i times x is equal to 0. The solutions are x1 equal to x3, looking at the first equation here. Here's the third variable x2 is equal to 1 half times x3, and because we're missing a pivot in the third column, x3 is free. In vector notation, my solutions are x3 times the vector 1, 1 half, and 1. So to conclude for this eigenvalue, the eigenspace is spanned by this single vector 1, 1 half, and 1. There is nothing special about this vector. We can take anything in the span 
we can take any uh, linear combination of this one, we can take a scalar multiple in fact and maybe make it look a little bit nicer. So if I double this vector I'll get rid of the fractions and we could just as well take in the vector 2, 1, 2 and look at the span of that and that's still the null space of a minus 2i. So our conclusion here is that the vector 2, 1, 2, that set containing just that vector 2, 1, 2 is a basis for the eigenspace for lambda equal to 2. Finally, if we take the vector to be, uh, I'm sorry, the eigenvalue uh, to be uh, lambda equal to minus 4, then you're finding a basis for the null space of a minus negative 4, so it would be a plus 4 times i. I'll let you do that as an example, but I'll show you the work uh, will unfold below, and then you can see if you come to the same conclusion that I did. So in conclusion, the null space that we're looking for, the eigenspace for lambda equal to minus 4, is the span of the vector that spans the solution set. I'm multiplying everything by uh, minus 5 just to make things look a little bit nicer. And the conclusion is that here is a basis for the eigenspace for lambda equal to minus 4. It is spanned by the single vector 1, 5, minus 5.